Okay, so picture this scenario. It's been a long day, you're chilled out in front of the TV, you're watching something, and it gets to 9.30 and you've told yourself, 9.30 every night I'm gonna stretch because I'm getting a bit older, stretching is gonna be quite important to help me, help me stay healthy. Okay, so now it gets to 9.30 and what do you do? You just sit there and you carry on binging TV. So I don't really have the discipline to get up and, and start stretching if I'm, if I'm already kind of chilled out then why not have an automation that's gonna help you? So that's exactly what I built. I've got an automation in the evening. Uh, if I'm just sat there relaxing, I'm gonna get a little bit of a warning that the TV's about to turn off and then it's gonna, it's gonna turn itself off to actively prompt me to go and stretch. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's gonna be the first automation. We've got a couple more automations as well. So we've got one where the kids can press a button and it's gonna flip over the HDMI input source to the bird box because we were we were lucky enough to have some blue tits nesting in the bird box this spring. And we're gonna also cover another automation, which is where you can press a button on the dashboard and then select a show that you want to put on and hit go and it's gonna turn the TV on, set the volume. Uh, it's gonna go and open the app and search for that particular show and then start playing it. So lots of cool stuff to check out regarding TVs. I've also added some chapters in the bottom of the video you'll be able to see. So if there's any particular automation that you want to jump ahead to, feel free and do that. And I'll catch you at the end of the video. We actually have an Android TV that we can use for turning on and off the device directly linked up to Home Assistant. If you don't have an Android TV, don't worry, you can still do this using HDMI CEC. HDMI CEC just means consumer electronics control. So if you have a device like a Google Chromecast with Google TV or a Fire Stick 4K, for example, or any other type of streaming device, it will most likely allow you to turn on and off the TV amongst other things using HDMI CEC. Do make sure though that your TV supports HDMI CEC though if you, if you plan on doing this and you're gonna fork out and go and buy one of these. There's an LED strip behind the TV that will give us a little bit of a warning before the TV's about to go and turn itself off. This isn't anything particularly fancy, it doesn't run WLED, it's just a fairly cheap LED strip that's controlled via Zigbee. Uh, if you're interested in grabbing the same one, I'll, I'll have a link down in the description. I originally had three automations to make this work. There was the, the first warning, which basically executed just before 9.30 and then would check the days of the week, check various conditions and then change the color of the lights to orange. The second warning, which changed it to red and then finally it would turn off the evening. But there was also repetitive stuff here. So it was basically checking the same things. So I consolidated this into a single automation. Um, so it's just gonna at 9.28. So, you know, it gives us three minutes or so warning. Uh, before turning the TV off, it's going to go ahead and check whether the light strip is on. Uh, the light strip, as we said earlier, comes on when the TV turns on and it's then going to check whether it's a school night or not. So uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or Sunday means that we probably got work the next day. So we're not going to be staying up particularly late. Um, it's then going to go and conditionally execute an action and it's going to check again whether the light strip is on and if it is it's going to call the turn on light service and it's going to pass the color name to orange which is just going to change the lights to orange uh, it's then going to wait for two minutes and it's going to conditionally execute another action so it's going to check whether the light strip is on still and the, re the reason that it does this is because it may have turned the color of the light strip orange as a as the first warning and then we might have turned the tv off and when the TV turns off, the light strip will turn off. So it's gonna check that, and then it's gonna call the turn on service again, and it's gonna set it to red, and that will give us our second warning, and it's gonna wait for one minute, and then the final check is to check again whether the light strip is still on, to infer that the TV is still on, and then it's gonna check for the TV cheat. And as long as the state is off for the TV cheat, which we'll, we'll get into in a minute, it's, it's gonna go ahead and turn off the TV. This is doing it directly with Android TV. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can do this with HDMI CEC as well. 
like all automations, you should be able to opt out of this one as well. So we made something called a TV cheat. So if we, for some reason, want to stay up a little bit later, or maybe it's a bank holiday, um, we don't want to have the TV turning itself off at 9.30, then we can opt into the TV cheat, which will basically disable this automation. This is, this is really cool for a number of reasons, because we could go and make the automation really, really complicated and pull in a calendar and look for public holidays and stuff like that. Or we could just make it so that we hit a button and it disables the automation. In my opinion, lots of automations should have this nice user experience to them where you can opt out of them. And this is where the TV cheat is. It's just on one of our dashboards that we have over here on this tab. You can just toggle TV cheat and then that's gonna stop the automation from turning the TV off. If you've never created one of these before, it's super simple. So you're just gonna go into settings, devices and services, helpers, and you can see the TV cheat input boolean is just here, which allows you to turn it on and off. And all you do, if you want to create a new one, is you go down to toggle, we're gonna to call it uh, example toggle, and we're just gonna select a TV remote control icon, that will do. Um, and there you go, you've got this example toggle and it's basically given you an input boolean here that you can use in your automations. Um, you can go ahead and delete them as well just by going to settings and delete, there we go. Okay, this is one where you do actually need a specific bit of kit. We've got a Sony Bravia TV and that will integrate directly into Home Assistant. Obviously, if you're using HDMI CEC, as soon as you switch the HDMI input source, that HDMI port isn't active anymore. So it's unfortunately not something that you can do with HDMI CEC. You do actually need a TV that supports this. Here's a nice tip. So this automation is actually quite difficult to follow along. So when an MQ MQTT message has been received, check and state is, is simple enough but then conditionally executing an action and checking HDMI input sources makes it really difficult to read. So you can actually rename these. So I'm going to do when the button is pressed, then if the TV is on, then we're going to conditionally execute this action and another action. So confirm the source of the TV is HDMI input four. So that is TV is playing a video. Then it's going to select a source for HDMI input one, which is actually set the bird box input. And if the TV isn't playing a video and we go into the else condition, then it's gonna go back to HDMI input four, which is the Google Chromecast. So this is going to set the input source to Google Chromecast and it's going to actively call the play uh, function. So when it flips back, it doesn't resume playing by default. Um, so I can rename this to resume playing. Okay, now this should be fairly straightforward to follow through. So when the button's pressed and if the TV is on, then it's going to check, is the TV playing video? If it is, it's gonna set the bird box input. If it's not, it's gonna set the input source back to the Google Chromecast and resume playing. So this allows you to press the button, see the bird box, press the button again, and flip it back to what you're originally watching. As a general rule, we try and limit as much TV time as possible for the kids, but there are instances where we do just need to give them the TV for a little bit so that we can get something done. Uh, this is a really cool automation for those times. So I can ask them, hey kids, what do you want to watch? And then they'll tell me and I can just hit the TV button, hit the show that they decide that they want to watch and then hit go and then off it goes and it does the rest. And I, I don't have to sit there and use the remote control to turn on the TV, set the volume, choose the show that they want to watch. It all just works by magic. This, this one's a bit more interesting. This isn't an automation per se. It's actually a script that I've created. So there's this kids TV script. 
And you can see I've done exactly what I said in the last automation that we looked at. I've tried to make it as readable as possible. So there's a very clear sequence of steps that it's going to go through. So the first thing it's going to do is turn on the TV, set the input source to the Chromecast, wait for seven seconds, and then select the media applet we're using. The, the reason for delaying for seven seconds is sometimes when it powers up the Chromecast, it can take a few seconds for things to properly settle. So once it's selected the media app, it's going to long press for the options, wait for a second, go to app settings, wait again, and then kill the app. And the reason that we're going to do that is because we want a very clear state to start working with the app. So maybe we'd been using the app before and we'd left it on a particular page. Um, it's going to wait for a couple of seconds for the app to actually be killed off. And then it's going to launch the app again, give a few seconds for the app to settle. It's going to select a profile, select the options for the profile and select no profile. Um, so that it doesn't maintain a search history. STM Beta is a YouTube app, so it's just not gonna, not gonna have any YouTube history there. Um, it's gonna wait for a couple of seconds for that to settle. It's gonna open the search box, wait for that to settle with the keyboard that pops up. Uh, it's gonna then select the show that we pass in. Uh, we're gonna get into this in more detail in a minute, but it effectively goes, have you passed through Bluey as the show? In which case, if you have, it's going to use the Android TV input, which we'll get into in a second as well, to basically emulate a bunch of button presses on the remote control. So if you imagine a virtual keyboard, it's actually going right, 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 right on the keyboard to select the key layer once. Um, so if I collapse that, then we've got this action, which was to search for Bluey. Oops, we've got this action which is the search for pepper, for pepper pig. Got this action, which is the search for coca melon, and we've got this action, which is the search for Paw Patrol. Um, it's gonna then go ahead, same, same action for every single show. It's gonna complete the search, wait for it to settle, select an episode, and then set the volume to an appropriate level. This is the Android TV remote, which is a direct home assistant integration. It gives you everything you could really want in terms of interacting with the, the Google TV. You can deep link, deep link into it using Intents. Uh, you can launch particular activities. You can do whatever you want with this automation. It's, it's very cool, works incredibly well. So I've got that integrated already. So this is the Android TV remote that I've got and it's controlling. You can see the, the Chromecast that we have running. So over on the dashboard, we've got this kids button. You tap that, you can select the show you might have realized that this is the same show that we had in the script that was running. And then when we hit go, it's gonna execute that. So the way that this has been created, if I go in and I edit this particular card, there is a kids stack here, which is using uh, just basically a button type uh, set as the teddy bear icon. Uh, it's gonna show the icon, have the name of kids and on the tap action, it's gonna fire a DOM event. What this is going to do is it's using browser mods to actually create a pop-up that's gonna let you choose the show. So that's what this is doing. Uh, it's firing a DOM event, and then it's passing this payload into the browser mods plugin, and it's gonna pass in this data. So it's gonna say, choose a show, and then it's going to use uh, the particular device ID, which is the tablet that it's running on. And when the action is called, the go button, it's going to invoke this service, which is the call the kids TV script, which is what we were looking at a minute ago. And it's going to pass in this payload for content and it's going to pass in show and the selected values is when they select Bluey, then it's going to pass in the value of Bluey as the show. Uh, if Cocomelon is selected, or Pepper is selected, or Paw Patrol is selected, it's going to pass this value into the script using the variable name as show. So if I go back into the script very quickly, the conditional action that's executed is show, is the variable, and Bluey would be the value if Bluey is selected. So what that means is you can tap kids, you can select Bluey and you can hit go and it's gonna invoke that script. 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. Hope you learned something. I'm a one-man band. I'm just starting out my YouTube journey. So if you hit like, it would really support the channel. If you want to see more content like this, let me know in the comments, maybe hit subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Ciao.